Hello everyone, welcome back to Doom Eternal. We're still in the cult of space. We got their special key to open a door. I like how their security label for the door is cultist key in big yellow letters. It's like, Can you uh, be you know, uh, in a cult if you actually acknowledge that it's a cult? I mean, like, you know, they're self-aware. That that deserves <laughs> praise. Self-awareness is a fine quality to have, even if it's your only fine quality. Um, <laughs> so. Dope there fish. he is! Oh, Jesus. Oh. What the hell? It's dope fish. That's just so random and out there. They made him extra grotesque in this game. I guess somebody had fun when making that model. Prob probably. I hope so. It says this is an arena, it's not an arena yet. <laughs> we had a whole team dedicated to dope fish teeth. There are I mean, more polygons have. in those teeth than the entirety of Super Mario. One of these days, <laughs> these I fish want, swim away from you. One of these days, I want Ed to just make such uh, an ungodly high detailed dope fish model and jam it into one of their games, so that it intentionally slows the frame rate down when it's on screen. <laughs> <laughs> what? So you have to look at it more? No, it's like. Hey, bro, what's going on with your frame rate? Oh, I got dope fished. Intentionally implement a moment where the dope fish tanks the frame rate, so that you want to you want to know what I would do if I was it in that situation. If ever the game detects that you're out of bounds, they put that dope fish model in front of the player, so ah. that you start the frame rate goes down, and so the speedrunner starts losing time. That's what I. <laughs> See, this is I, your I was punishment. thinking like genius, dope actually. fish would they pick you up like it's Lakitu from fucking Mario your Kart. Punishment for going out of bounds. The dope fish <laughs> ruins your time. I mean, to be, I mean, that would be a good idea considering, I mean, already speedruns of this game are basically. So in this level, I'm oh, gonna step yeah. out of bounds and just walk to the end. It's like those are the most the boring speedruns. The yeah, speedruns of this game are so disappointing. Because so, uh, uh, it sounds like they don't even play it. Uh, no, don't. so there's a weird exploit where if you bind your uh, jump to the mouse wheel uh, and then constantly scroll if, if you fall off of a certain platform, you just fly, basically, and you can just go oh. right to the end of the level. Really? So and that's like boom. most of the, <laughs> and that's like most of the most of the speed run, and so it's kind of like, okay, you're not really playing the game, are you? <laughs> yeah. I, for the sake of just getting the fastest time, it's not the most visually interesting. Yeah, yeah. And it's like those are the most boring speedruns because nothing ever happens in them. I mean, no, it's, no. It's, it's interesting to know the exploit and the technical short and the, te the technical oversights that lead to them, but um, that's not exactly a fun way yeah. to play the game, is it? I, mean, I feel like this is also disappointing, just in the aspect of. Um, like, because glitchless speedruns do exist. You can yeah. play certain games like that. I just think part of what's probably disappointing is is that this is probably also not a super great glitchless speedrun because it's probably like five or six hours, which is no fun for almost anybody, yeah. I would imagine. Um, which I guess is just somewhat disappointing in, in that sense. I, I think maybe like an all secret speed run with a couple glitches might be more tolerable. I haven't looked into that. So yeah, I'm um, pulling out the Metroid <laughs> Prime card again. Uh, this is the Fendrano Drifts. So, is there a phase on mines in this game? Um, mm. kind of. You have to think about that. Oh. I don't remember what the phase is. Doom Eternal can... just repurpose Metroid Prime. I'm not complaining. I mean, I'm not either. I guess you more something to play the game. I mean, a lot of the environments in Metroid Prime, for as much as I love the game, are kind of just generic. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. Take that. Ice no, level. Desert no, level. This is this is Lava this is level. Metroid. This Blue is Metroid level. Ice. That's Metroid Sand. That's <laughs> Metroid Fire. So Dark uh, level. Like actually the only game in the series with interesting level designs is three. Now that I'm thinking about it. Like in terms you mean, of level tropes. You, say, you say yeah. two. I was gonna punch you I in mean, the face. I mean two's saying. more interesting than one just on the sense that oh, oh God. it's an interesting well, game. Oh mean, boy, one of one of my least favorite new enemies. I mean it's I hate a snake. These fuckers. in Metroid Prime One it makes sense that the environments are a bit generic in this because the planet you're on isn't that heavily inhabited 
So it's basically just nature with a slight overlay I love of nature. civilization. <laughs> um, but Metroid Prime 3, they took advantage of the fact that you're traveling from one from to different planets to give each planet its own distinct alien feel. So that was more interesting conceptually. But Metroid Prime 1 was trying to hit the basics. Like, by the basics, you mean be Super Metroid, but 3D this time. Yes. Well, yeah. Here is Iceland. Y you spend one game getting the, getting the, uh, getting the basic fundamentals of the of series design down in 3D, and then you start to get experimental after that, and then everyone hates you until you do a game that wasn't <laughs> experimental and they realized you were genius all along. <laughs> Which is basically yeah. I was gonna say that's usually the trend with this sort of thing. Like, 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 that, it, like it, nobody was like everybody would like critique the Prime Two stuff. I was like, but like ten years later, was Prime Two the most artistically pleasing? It's, that's it, no. always what happens. And it's like oh, um, you yeah, don't yeah. like Twilight. It, it's it, it's just <laughs> you like love Wind Waker. Now. <laughs> yeah, they did. Zelda Zelda had the problem, and then Metroid had the problem because Other M was just you know, stealing all of Super Metroid's aesthetic designs again, and people realized, hey, you know, the Prime series was actually trying to do its own thing a lot of the time, wasn't it? And that was cool. Why can't we do that again? I don't necessarily know if Metroid Prime 2 and 3 had that exact reaction from the fan base, though, because uh, I don't really know what the immediate response on the part of the fans to those games was. You like Metroid Prime 2 for different reasons, I think. Yeah. yeah. And, and although, to, although it was mostly Metroid fans are just happy to get anything whenever anything comes out, really. <laughs> uh, nowadays, yeah, but I don't think that was the case when Metroid Prime 3 was new. No, uh, well, yeah, um, well, not even Prime 2, because Prime 2 was still around the time of a, of, of a, of a Metroid high. Yeah. yeah. Because, remember, Prime and Fusion came out at the same time. Which never fucking happened yeah, to the and franchise few, ever since Yeah, then. Zero Mission came and out two years later. Prime was like Prime Two was like what, two thousand five? Prime two two thousand four. Yeah. I think yeah, so they got two Metroid games uh in every one other year. year. Two Metroid yeah. games the next year. Prime three came out two thousand seven. So yeah. And that's it. I think that's what that's I think what the I think ended. if Prime three got an underwhelming fan reception, it was more because it was on the Wii and less because of any qualities the game no, had. I don't think no, I don't remember the game having in in a bad reception at all. I, I don't mean People a like I don't it. mean a bad reception. I mean well. not gaining quite enough recognition to really wow the publisher. Um like People liked it, but I don't think it sold. Which that is bizarre well. because it was it was a title released on the Wii's Prime, you know. Well, the, Wii was, the Wii the Wii was also heavily marketed towards super casuals, fine. and super casuals don't play Metroid. I mean, yeah, but a lot of people still had it though. That's the point. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say it's its Prime because eh, Prime because <laughs> um, uh, like the, it, it came out before Mario Galaxy is the thing. So um, did it? Yeah, it came out like August. Was it? Of oh the, yeah, uh, yeah, summer of two thousand seven. Yeah, that, yeah, that so makes in, in before Mario Kart, before Smash Brothers. So like the Wii had a really strong like first three years. All things considered, it was 2008 um, onwards. That like late 2008, where stuff like like to right, at, right after Sprawl came out, it was kind of like okay, now we have nothing else to play for the rest of the system. <laughs> I think like Mario Kart came out just like a couple of months after Brawl, and then yeah, there was it was pretty slow after that. Fine. I still I still feel like the Wii has a lot of underappreciated gems. That was the thing because nobody took it seriously from like 2009 on. It, I, not the, the shovelware. It no. does. Well, yeah, I mean, the, every. The I feel like people overemphasize the Wii's shovelware because no, 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 the don't, Wii. Don't, has... don't, 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 don't misconstrue me. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that no other console didn't, but the Wii had so much of it that it buried a lot of other the shit. Wii That's, the that most, was the problem. The Wii had the most shovelware. Since Ninja the Breadman. Never forget Ninja, Ninja Breadman and Anubis <laughs> 2, which is not actually a sequel. <laughs> um, I believe we're PS2 <laughs> games to start off with. Hold on. Is that factoid wrong? I'm not a Ninja Breadman um, uh, expert here. <laughs> but I'm going to I'm gonna double check just to make sure. I was kind of hoping you left it out. I'm not a Ninja Breadman. Yeah, man. it was Ninja Breadman was originally a PS2 game from 2005. This... So I'm not going to have you stain the Wii's reputation by blaming the Ninja Breadman on it. Can I just say that this area <laughs> suddenly, inexplicably feels like a multiplayer map? Um, I mean, sorry. a lot of the arenas from this point on are kind of built like they're arena maps for a multiplayer game. 
Does, I, does this game have a multiplayer mode? I know the first uh, one. Yes, it does. It, yes, but it's not a traditional deathmatch I sort of deal. I tend not to like it when the levels in a single-player first-person shooter start to feel like that. Because at that point, things start to feel a little chaotic. These kinds of arenas were built more for like when you have multiple human opponents strategically maneuvering around a chaotic space to outwit each other, and they don't tend to work yeah. so well when one side is AI controlled and using very basic strategies to go after you. Because then they just I swarm that... you, and the environments aren't really suited to that. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, for this game's case it works because the enemies are sort of balanced for it, but in, in other game cases I would agree. Yeah, it, it's just... Um... I said earlier in the playthrough that I found Halo Reach's level design a bit too chaotic, and it was partly because of that, because a lot of the environments felt like they would, have been, at, they would have been at home in a multiplayer game, but didn't work quite so well in single player. Um, How good is the multiplayer in this game? Because I've never heard anyone it's, talk about it's it. It's basically It just quake. kind of exists. It's quake. Um, it, uh, actually, it's very weird. Uh, so, it's not your traditional deathmatch. Uh, the multiplayer is one versus two, uh, where one wow. one person one person is the Doom Slayer and two people are demons. Is that? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that isn't what they were. It's, that isn't what they did last time, is it? No, it's no. Last different. time. Um, okay. So in 2016, they outsourced the multiplayer to a different developer, uh, and. Ah. It, it was reportedly not very happy with it, so they tried to fix it in an update post-launch, but it just wasn't enough to really save it. Um, so in this one, they made it all in-house. It's one versus two, Slayer versus Demons. Uh, the Demon players can, like, spawn other Demons. So for the for the Slayer side, it, it does feel more like a single-player experience, but huh. multiplayer. You know what that sounds and it's, like? It's fun, but it's not... It, it's hard for me to go back it to. It sounds like the same concept that the Resident Evil 3 remake did for its Resistance multiplayer. Oh, God. So are you saying that this game, which is trying to bring back to the era of single-player uh, games in a in a market dominated by the single-player campaign being a half-assed version of the multiplayer, uh, has the multiplayer be a half-assed version of the single-player? Yes. Yes. Interesting how that works out. <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm struggling to think of a uh, the last because I don't play a lot of FPSs. It's just not my genre. The last FPS that had a legitimately great single player and multiplayer. Um, I know that people like both the campaign and the multiplayer in Halo One and Two, uh, but that was like I, I don't think so. did did Halo One have multiplayer? I thought that was a Halo. Yes, two. it did. Yeah. It, no, no. Huh. it, it had pretty simple. Like deathmatch and stuff. Oh, okay. This all is overpowered. <laughs> I don't get how you make your default dinky ass weapon the most powerful weapon in the game. Like, how do you even do that? DPS. I the suppose. developer really liked the developer really liked the pistol. I mean, I guess, but it's is it, the pistol is like supposed to be the least fun weapon to use, right? Because it's the only one you have left. <laughs> the priests hid the super shotgun from you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And we're going to go get it back. Do you have a normal shotgun, or is your shotgun? Yeah, that, that's the that's the gun you start with. Oh, okay. Yeah, I... you don't you don't have a pistol in this game because the pistol in 2016 sucked. You know, if they really wanted to keep you from getting your super shotgun back, they could have disassembled it and dumped it in lava. But now they also probably shouldn't make it glow that, green I like that. Like... What? They're demons, aren't Wait. they? <laughs> They're priests or something. I yeah. don't know. You probably put like a bomb in it that would blow the. <laughs> Well, dump it in the ocean, then. Let it explode underwater. Cast it into the abyss! I do find oh, it funny that fire. you think you're about to get the shotgun, and then the game drops you into a death pit with spikes and flamethrowing demons. Like, that's Very a good Very self-aware level gag. design. <laughs> also, these demons just exist to stand around, and then when you shoot them, they just fly away. You know what they should have done? Is that they should have destroyed the super shotgun, made a replica super shotgun with a bomb inside it, so that the moment Doom Guy gets his gun back and pulls the trigger, he dies. Well, it um, wouldn't kill him. It would just, that would probably just make him matter. <laughs> I thought that you were going to say that we should just give our own demons a super shotgun. <laughs> I mean, that's also a good idea, but I feel like that, with that... That bang, happens later. 
I feel like with that plan, Lewis, uh, Doom Guy would look at the gun and then he'd be examining it like he does whenever he gets a new weapon. And then on the side, it said Acmeco. And he's like, hmm. <laughs> no, you give, like, the priests make a new super shotgun for Doom Guy, but it's like, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the fifth element. Like, oh, it no. has all these uh, uh, weapon uh, arrangements, but you don't tell him about the self destruct button on the side. <laughs> so that when he does press it, boom. Or maybe it only looks like a sh super shotgun, and it makes super shotgun noises. <laughs> but it's actually a cake. But it actually <laughs> fires healing beams at the demons. Oh. That so would probably be a dumb guy. So he heals oh, so that, the final that would boss when he's about to kill it. Good, more, more time to killing demons. <laughs> <laughs> that is a thing that they do... Um, what am I thinking? Oh, it's Animorphs. That's what I remember. Um <laughs> Whoa, that's what the fuck. Uh, oh what? yeah, there's a there's a sequence in one of the Animorphs books where an 11 year old boy gets tortured. Um, <laughs> the Animorphs. Oh, series oh no, is... he's more like he's more like 14. Okay, you know, but the, um, the Anim he's, he's he's stuck in the, the form of a hawk, basically. So yeah. when they try to torture him by giving him pain, he just retreats into the hawk's animal instincts, and so he can like live through it. The bad guys realize this, so then they use their machine to, like, flood him with happy emotions. I forget how specifically they do that. And his brain can't handle that, and then when, while he's, like, freaking out about that, then they torture him again, and it's like, Jesus Christ. The Animorphs, the Animorphs I, is, I, fuck, is, is, is fucked like, up. I, they, I haven't... <laughs> Go ahead, Lewis. It's, it's like, it should be conceptually silly, but... The author was really like dead serious about the concept, so yeah. So. yeah um, like the I, I thought you were gonna go like the the kid transforms into Doom Guy. <laughs> no, well they <laughs> again that that's like the cover of the book. Well, they like, can the kid do that. They can they Doom can guy. transform into like just normal humans, but they don't. Like or doing at the very it. least, it transforms into Doom Guy's rabbit. Yeah, well, they could they could do that too. There is an episode. <laughs> there is an ep there's an episode where the kid who can who's stuck as a hawk he transforms into the rabbit and he looks after the kids of the rabbit he just ate because he feels guilty about eating oh. living animals. Like <laughs> these kids, the fuck? these kids are psychologically screwed up by the end this of the like, series. This is like this is like a beta Undertale. No, like we're it's literally it's describing her. it is it is really it is really fucked up. Like um, they describe in detail Marco who's transform who's like battle form is like a gorilla like his guts get sliced open every other book and he de describes <laughs> him like holding in his intestines while punching aliens in the face it it's I thought actually these were children's books they are children's <laughs> book what the fuck well, so he gets his guts sliced open every other day it's like ever thought Animorphs was a weird <laughs> relic of a time before like young adults and children's novels started to get taken seriously by publishers. Yeah, so you could just get whatever... You could put whatever you want in there because the parents were just happy that the kids were reading. They didn't care. Uh, um, <laughs> and, then Harry, and then Harry Potter came around. And then. Somewhat, yeah, but at Harry the Potter same time... Everything. Somewhat, but at the same time, publishers were afraid to, to, to publish books that were especially long or involved. So it all had to be in short novel... children's novel format where... Um, there were length and word count limitations that you wouldn't see nowadays, and yeah. it's... Yeah, but they do do a good... I will say that the author does do a great job at... Well, I should say authors, because many of the later books are ghostwritten. Um, they do a great job of actually, like, exploring what the psychological ramifications of this sort of thing. Like, where these 13-year-olds, like, have to murder people, and a lot of these people that they're murdering do not... Like, it's not their fault because the aliens in that series, like, mind control, invade, people, mind control people. So, like, you're fighting the aliens, yes, but their their hosts still die when you, when you like, rip Kill out their, their jugular as a tiger. So, it's... it's <laughs> I actually do recommend reading it. The books have hold up better than you might think they have. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, anyway, uh... <laughs> I just don't really like the concept, to be honest. So all the oh, dude, but it's like you turn to like the cover where there's like one is a lizard and then he's a dude and it's like. Ooh. I just like the little in between transitions. Oh yeah, yeah. They always those like, are I just, those I just, are. I just want a book dedicated to those. <laughs> yeah, uh, like, I I never read those books as a kid because I always thought it was a bit weird. 
<laughs> now only, that I'm I learning that it's... I used to get in it's... trouble for reading them. I only, remember, I only remember seeing the covers when I was a kid in, like, book order catalogs. Yeah. Yeah, Scholastic it's, Book yeah. Fair, the best day of school. Every yeah. year. Oh, the scented pencils. Captain <laughs> Underpants, yes. I remember my parents would never the let me get anything sets. fun. At the book fair, like the PC games that they would have, which are probably terrible in in retrospect. That depends. Were they super solvers or something? Um, they were always like the PC versions of like like PC hey. games based off of the books. So like, uh, like the read along things. Yeah, like the you know the Arthur ones. I think they had like stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so in retrospect, it's probably good that my parents didn't let me get those, but still. It's just like, oh, all my friends can get the cool stuff. I have to get a stupid book. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> oh, well. I miss Scholastic. <laughs> Why do you have to make him shoot himself? Because it's funnier that it's way. It's funny. Skeleton man shoot himself. <laughs> How did you make him pull the trigger, though? Oh, I think he just does it himself. He, well, I think at that point it's just like, okay... Either Doom it, you, guy you, you, rips you. my head off, or I shoot now. <laughs> if I shoot through. now, he might not—he might not have time to rip my arm off and hit me with it. That's I a, just like to think that they're idiots, and he's just like, "Okay, I need to shoot to protect self," and then bang. <laughs> <laughs> and they might just be that stupid, actually. Yeah, they are zombies after all. But we'll be getting our super shotgun in the next part of Doom Eternal.